Welcome to Coming Home, helping you survive and thrive in your homeschooling. How to ensure you're refreshed over the holiday season. We're nearing Christmas and New Year holiday season here in New Zealand. For us in the Southern Hemisphere, most folk take holidays at this time. It's the summer. In fact, it's been said that much of New Zealand closes down between Christmas and the first half of January. A recurring theme in my podcast is self-care, refreshment and enjoying your family. It's hard to enjoy them when you're permanently exhausted. It's really important to be rested by the end of the holiday and ready to start bookwork again. If you're not rested, at the start of the term, you'll never catch up on yourself. Let's just say I learned the truth of this the hard way. Here are some practical ideas. Take turns with your husband on taking time by yourself and to sleep in, especially if your children are little and too young to be independent. You don't need to cram your day with activities just because you're on holiday but do be present with your children when you are with them. Keep a routine going, for example, afternoon rest time and the washing, and be sure to do maintenance-only housework. Make simple meals and get the children involved. You're on holiday, remember? Eat from the fridge and the freezer using the leftovers. Unsubscribe from newsletters you don't need. I know you have these. Get busy doing nothing. Don't read a how-to homeschool book just yet. Do a mindless craft. Knit. Read an easy book. Start a big holiday jigsaw puzzle with the family. Do not feel guilty about doing nothing. You are doing something, even though it looks like nothing. After this list, I'm going to go a bit deeper on this one. Next, your holiday can be a good time to sort your wardrobe, moving on clothes you don't fit or wear and replacing them if needed. This could be a good way to spend time with a child, or not, depending on whether he actually cares about what he wears. Once you're rested, give a little time each day to declutter linen and kitchen cupboards. Look over the coming year's calendar and make a rough plan with what you know will happen and what could happen. For example, sport, school term start and stop dates, Easter and other public holidays. You don't need to plan in detail just now, but it will bring a piece that an overview has started and you can fill in things about them as you go. Back to busy doing nothing. You're giving your body, and more importantly, your mind a chance to rest. The post-Christmas New Year time became my thinking time, and it still is, even though my homeschooling days are over. When you're living in the fast lane during the year, and homeschool mums do, you don't get much opportunity to think thoroughly and have big thoughts. This takes time, and during the school year, chunks of nothing time just don't seem to exist. For me, it took about five days maximum, depending on how tired I was, to wind down, and then the brain space was free to allow the ideas which had burrowed in and were quietly waiting for the time to start floating upwards. You need to trust for this process to happen. It will Whilst you're sitting, knitting, reading, walking, pottering over the puzzle, you'll be surprised and reassured at the ideas which appear. Have pen and paper or digital close by to jot them down and let the flow happen. Don't start reading how-to books until this process has started and you feel your ideas and thoughts are out and written down. Don't worry about how silly or far-fetched they sound. Write them down. You're not committed to them, but you can mentally move on to the next thing once they're out and written. 
That's what drafts and editing are for. To refine and sift and even rewrite. Do that later. Once your marvellous ideas are out, then start on the how-to books, podcasts and other helps. Look over them carefully before you start. Now that your ideas are fresh on your mind, which books explore these and will help you solidify and plan? These are your priorities. Leave the others in the pile. You probably won't be needing them. I had to give up reading about all the different kinds of homeschooling approaches as I would just feel confused, guilty and then weak. If a homeschooling style suits you and the family, Don't keep checking to see if there's something better out there. It's wasting good thinking time and undermining your confidence. Goodness knows you can do without that. If you do need to change or tweak what you're doing, you'll know. And here are some signs that this is so. You'll feel exhausted all the time, dissatisfied with homeschooling, grumpy and worried. The children are not progressing or struggling with the way they're being taught. The method or curriculum just doesn't match their learning style and it feels like you're fighting them all the time. You feel the joy has been sucked out and it's hard most of the time. These are all signs that you need to check and rethink your how. Are you reluctant to change? because you've spent a lot of money on a curriculum or books. You didn't homeschool your children only to end up using what doesn't work because it would be a waste of money to stop. Take a big breath and view it as experience and a lesson learnt. Sell them and go back to a fresh page and sort out how to choose according to your child's learning style and long-term goals. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off and carry on. My mum would say, chalk it up to experience, Chris. I've had to do that a few times in my life and no doubt I'll have to do it again. Everyone makes mistakes, but to willfully carry on with your mistake is misguided at best and stubborn at worst. I do send my love to you all and I wish for you a special holiday. May you be refreshed and encouraged. Until next time, enjoy your family and live, really live.